My name is Louise Dye and I'm Professor of Psychology at the Institute of Psychological Sciences at the University of Leeds. And I'm going to explain what is correlation and why this is a useful approach in psychology. I'll try to distinguish between correlative approaches from causal strategies and to show how these can be used to understand behaviour. Psychology, which is the science of human behaviour, uses certain strategies to investigate behaviour. Because we take a scientific approach and consider psychology to be a scientific study of behaviour, we want to start by formulating hypotheses, ideas, um, like for instance that androgens, the male hormones, might be linked to aggressive behaviour. And once we've formulated our hypothesis, we gather data to test it. So in this case, we might measure androgen levels of men and also measure how aggressive they are by, for instance, giving them a questionnaire to ask about their aggressive traits. Once we've collected our data, we want to use statistics to evaluate the data and to draw conclusions about how likely it is that the result that we've found could have occurred by chance. In this case then, with androgens and aggression, we'd be looking for a correlation between those two variables. In other words, we want to find out the probability of finding this outcome and how likely it is that it occurred by chance. So we can use different scientific strategies. If we use a correlative approach, we can examine relationships. That's contrasted with a causal approach. So in a correlative approach, we measure two variables and examine whether there's a relationship between the two variables. We also try to determine the direction and the strength of this relationship. The direction could be positive or negative and the strength could be weak or strong. And we need to be able to say whether this relationship is significant. Is it strong enough or stronger than we would expect by chance? An alternative approach is to adopt a causal strategy. This is what we use in experiments. Here we manipulate one variable, which we call the independent variable, and examine its effect on another variable, which we call the dependent variable. And what we're trying to do here is to determine whether a change in one variable causes some change in the other thing. So, for instance, in behaviour. If we manipulate someone's androgen levels, do we see a change in their aggressive behaviour? OK, let's think about positive correlation. This figure is called a scatter plot, and it shows the rating of regression and androgen levels that we've measured in a group of individuals. Each one of those points is one individual, and what we can see here is that they lie in an increasing straight line. So what we can say is that as androgen levels increase, rating of behaviour also increases. And because they lie in that positive straight line, we say that the relationship is positive. Let's look at this example. This is the same kind of scatter plot, but here we've plotted subordination, a measure of submissive behaviour, against androgen levels. And here what we see is the pattern is the opposite. As androgen levels increase, subordinate behaviour decreases. And that relationship, we would say, was a negative relationship. We can evaluate the strength of a relationship between two variables by calculating a correlation coefficient. And these correlation coefficients can take any value between positive 1 and negative 1. If we get a value of positive 1, we have a perfect positive correlation coefficient where all the points would lie on a straight line in an increasing direction. If we get a value of negative 1, that's a perfect negative correlation and all the points would lie again on a straight line but in the opposite direction. Zero indicates that there's no correlation or relationship between the two variables and we're looking for linear relationships here. So any value between 0 and 1 can be a valid value for a correlation coefficient. So we might have a value of 0.6 or 0.7 showing a strong correlation, a value of 0.2 or 0.3 showing a weaker correlation. Perfect correlations 
taking a value of positive 1 or negative 1 are actually really unusual in psychology. So this is a strong negative correlation, but it's not a perfect correlation because the points don't all lie on the line. It might have a value of about 0.6 or 0.7. So this scatter plot shows weak or no correlation. And here there's really no evidence of a linear relationship between the two variables. So we say that the correlation is weak or there's no correlation. One of the problems with the correlative strategy is that even if we find the correlation, we can't say that one variable causes the other variable. Even things like height and weight are not perfectly correlated. Even though tall people tend to be heavier than short people, there are still some short, heavy people and some very tall, not so heavy people. So the correlation isn't perfect, but it is quite strong. Um, finding a strong and significant correlation then between height and weight could still mean that both of those variables are influenced by a third variable. So height and weight might be determined by your genes and the nutrition that you experienced in your growing up years. Um, and what we would say there was that the third variable, then your genes or your environment, determined both your height and your weight. And it's a bit of a chicken or egg situation. We also can't say which came first. So in all correlations, all we can say is there is a relationship and not that one variable caused the other or one variable preceded the other. If we want to look at whether something caused something else, we have to take our experimental or causal strategy. So if we go back to the example about androgens and aggression, if we wanted to adopt a causal strategy, we could either systematically vary the androgen level and measure the effect on aggression, or we could systematically vary the level of aggression and measure the effect on androgens. In the first case, systematically varying the androgen level treats the androgen level as the independent variable and we measure the effect on the aggression which we call the dependent variable. If we were to induce aggression in people, put them in aggressive situations, we would be systematically varying the level of aggression, treating it as the independent variable and in this case the androgen level that they produced in response to that experience would be the thing that we measured, our dependent variable. Which strategy should psychologists employ? It depends on your hypothesis and also how practical it is to do that experiment using an experimental approach. So for instance, if your hypothesis was drinking alcohol will affect reaction time, we could give people alcohol or a controlled placebo drink and measure their reaction times. Providing we didn't let them drive home, that might be an okay example of an experimental strategy. If your strategy was that twins raised apart would have similar IQs, it's not very ethical to do an experiment where we take twins and give them to different families to see in later life what their, whether their IQs are similar. So we perhaps there, because of these ethical considerations, have to use a correlative strategy. So different strategies will be employed for different hypotheses depending on ethical considerations and practical constraints. And you have to decide which is the best strategy for your hypothesis.